the last one, war is not the answer, I disagree. War absolutely is the answer. And if you don't agree with me, happy 4th of July. <laughs> people seem to think we won this country in a game of Yahtzee. I'm not saying bomb innocent people. I'm not saying force your beliefs on others. But we're American. We come from fighting. It's what we do. It's what we're good at. It's what we like. That's why it's the fighting Irish of Notre Dame, not the arguing Jews of Brandeis. <laughs> You're taught this from a kid. You're a cheerleader. You're taught it's go, fight, win, not come, discuss, we'll see. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> I'm supposed to stand up here and I'm supposed to tell you that you should love each other and not care. But I can't do that because I understand hate and I understand that unmitigated, unbridled sense of rage that you can feel toward a stranger. Because I fly out of LAX at least four times a week. <laughs> so I get it. I was at the airport. I'm gonna preface this by saying I'm a morning person and I'm a people person. But there was a woman, we had the whole airport to stand. She was like right here. And I don't know if it's because I was wearing Britney Spears perfume. She wanted to be near some white trash. I don't know what it was. <laughs> she was just in my junk and it was annoying. And the thing is, I know how crazy I am. I don't know how crazy she is. So I didn't want to say anything to her, but I start to get upset and the sadistic wheels in my head start turning. And I start thinking about not only how much I hate her, how I want to kill her, how I want to dispose of the body, what horrible parent she must have had that, that gave this child no idea about spatial relations, what kind of a sleeper hold I could put her in if we ever got into some sort of octagon situation. And the whole thing comes to a screeching halt because she simply looks at me and goes, oh, sorry, didn't mean to crowd you, and moves. Now I'm left with a resting heart rate of a thousand and a sweat mustache. And I realized something. Rage doesn't dissipate. It builds, because it's energy. It can't disappear. It builds, and it builds, and it builds, and it builds, until one day you get a tumor or you flip the fuck out on a toll booth worker. It's one of the two. That's how these things happen, and it's not your fault. It's society's fault. Specifically television, specifically Corn Pops commercials from the early 90s. <laughs> Remember these commercials? There's a boy, he's sitting there. He's a teenager, because that's when the rage starts. <laughs> he's eating his corn pops. We don't know what's on his mind. Probably thinking about how he's gonna torture the neighborhood squirrel. We don't know. <laughs> his brother comes in, messing with him. Hey dude, what's up? Whoop, got your pops. Something goes off in this kid's head. <laughs> and you start to hear that psycho inner monologue, right? He's like, oh my God, he's got my pops. Now I'll never have cereal. Now I'll never eat again. I need my cereal now. What if I can't survive? How am I gonna feed this fucking demon that's living in my stomach? I'm gonna kill everyone. I'm gonna bring a fucking gun to school if I don't get my cereal. <laughs> His brother comes back. He's like, "Never mind, bro. You can have him back. Sweat mustache, gotta have my pops. Gotta have a sedative. Are you out of your fucking mind? That is cereal. The point is, folks, there's enough cereal to go around, so learn to share with your brother. Thanks for coming out tonight.